All right, so this is the third video, and now we're going to kind of get into the short-term causes, basically what immediately leads to the Civil War beginning in 1936. The first two videos kind of covered long-term causes, the lead-up to this point by the 1920s, 1930s. And so this will be more of like a series of events. Um, the first event, really, the first incident in the 20th century that resulted in the Spanish monarchy beginning to lose power came in the 1920s with the dictatorship of a guy named Primo de Rivera. So it began in 1921 when people became angry after news arrived that the Spanish army had been slaughtered in Morocco by tribesmen and that supposedly the king had ordered this suicidal attack that left 10,000 Spanish soldiers dead. General Primo de Rivera saw this as an opportunity and announced that he would take over the government while leaving the king in place. In 1923, he seized power and suspended the constitution. And while he didn't depose the king, uh, dispose the king, depose the king, whatever, <laughs> the monarchy was undermined. And de Rivera ran Spain as a militaristic dictator from 1923 until 1931. At first industrialist and liberal middle classes supported de Rivera's move. However, the deficit doubled between 1925 and 1929, and his support waned. In 1930, with the onset of the global depression and loss of support from the military, de Rivera resigned and fled the country to France. He would die there within a couple weeks of leaving power, and I already talked about it in the last video, but his son, Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera, would then found the fascist party of Spain later on in the 30s. So de Rivera is gone. The king appoints another general as the leader of the country, but more progressive intellectuals basically didn't want to see another military dictatorship. And so you had the socialist PSOE and their union, the UGT. They got together in the city of San Sebastian and signed a pact to call for general strikes until elections were held. Uh, finally, in 1931, the king called for these elections due to mounting pressure. Elections in 1931 showed the countryside to be overwhelmingly pro-monarchy. However, the results were probably heavily falsified by landowners. In the cities, the Republican and Socialist candidates won out unanimously. The king feared a revolution, chose to follow de Rivera's lead, and fled the country as well. So the signers of the San Sebastian Pact became the new government of Spain, declaring a second republic in Spain on April 14th of 1931. Now, this second republic, when it was declared in April of 1931, was celebrated in cities across Spain. Uh, many people were overjoyed that their country was joining other Western nations and sort of finally having a democracy. They had the short-lived one in the 1870s, but this felt more permanent. The term republic was not neutral. It clearly meant a shift in policy towards the poor masses and promises of efforts to reform land ownership, improve wages, and institute public health care and education. And this is what had brought the working classes to the polls. So obvious was the implication of the word republic in the early days that the new government had to actually restrain Catalonian nationalists from declaring a separate Catalonian republic um, immediately and instead promised them they would get more autonomy when they got a constitution drafted. There were some that were very worried. Everyone knew that the relationship between the Catholic Church and the government would probably change, so bishops in the Catholic Church were especially afraid this new government would actively attempt to secularize the country, weaken the church's power. The military also feared restriction. The monarchy had traditionally been associated with empire and religion, and so surely this new government would attempt to assert civil authority over military authority and lessen its power. So a provisional government is put in place before they formalize anything, and from the spring and summer of 1931, this provisional government held supreme authority, making preparations for general elections in June of 31, and then having an assembly that would meet in July to draft a constitution. There are immediately problems, though. There's no consensus in the Republican government on how to go about reforming Spain, especially without provoking an angry backlash from traditional elites. This disagreement over how to achieve leftist goals, by the way, would persist all the way through the war to 1939. 
Beyond the immediate goal of removing a monarchy and reducing the power of the nobility and the church, the leftist had no real common vision. The prime minister and later first president of the republic, uh, Nacido Alcala Zamora, was a Catholic and former monarchist. Uh, he didn't really see much need for social reforms. He just wanted to overthrow the monarchy and establish a republic. That was enough. You also had the leader of the radical party, Alejandro LaRue, who was famously anti-clerical in his youth and had no desire to see property redistributed. And then you had on the left, Manuel Azana, who was a provisional minister of war and eventually the prime minister, second president, etc. He was more of a secular intellectual offended by the Catholic Church's role in the government. He wanted free secular schools for all, non-religious basis for citizenship, etc. You also then had groups like the Catalans that wanted you know, to have independence for certain regions. You had socialists and unionists who wanted to alleviate the poor's problems and socialized production and distribution eventually. More radical communists who wanted immediate wealth redistribution and nationalization of industry. And then you had anarchists who didn't want a government at all. So the first reforms were instituted from April to July. The provisional minister of labor and trade unionist Largo Caballero uh, began issuing decrees to help workers. This included an eight-hour workday arbitration committees between workers and employers and laws that prevented landowners from importing cheaper labor. They had to use people that were there. Additionally, they issued decrees declaring that for the first time women could be eligible to run for office in June um, and could vote. And religious liberty was declared. Catholic images were removed from state-run schools. Probably the biggest reform, the most impactful, though, dealt with the military. Spain, Spain had a problem where almost half of its budget in the government went to the military, yet it still lagged behind most European countries in terms of modern equipment. They had one bomber. The majority of their planes were flimsy and for reconnaissance. The majority of the budget went to the officer corps, which had 800 generals and was roughly the same size as the German officer corps in 1914, and that was at the beginning of the World War. This prompted provisional minister of war Manuel Azana to issue a decree reducing the number of military officers who he saw as overpaid and just overstaffed. They didn't fire officers. Officers were offered full retirement benefits if they quit, and 40% of the officer corps was reduced through this. As well, he closed the military academy at Saragossa, which happened to be led by a general named Francisco Franco, who we'll talk more about later. To the conservatives in Spain, especially the military and the church and their supporters, this was all too much. The conservative newspapers and media in Spain proclaimed that the new government was godless and advocating Soviet-style communism. They fear-mongered and appealed to people's fears of this new leftist republic. Newspapers like Le Epoca, <laughs> I'm butchering these names, ABC and Le Correspondencia claimed this was all the first step towards creating a new government of Jewish Bolshevik Masonic conspirators. There was a not only were they anti communists, they also tended to be anti Semitic in a lot of their language, similar to Mussolini and, and Hitler, really. Several within the officer corps were angry at the moves made by the government. The fears of this new leftist government were made even worse in May when riots and church burnings broke out. They began on May 11th when a rumor began to circulate that a taxi driver had been beaten outside a monarchist club for shouting Viva la Republica. Crowds gathered in the streets and set the building of the newspaper ABC, one of those conservative newspapers, on fire along with some nearby churches. The civil guards were called in and ended up killing two people in the subsequent riot. The next day, several groups set fire to churches and covenants throughout Madrid. Minister of War Azana refused to send out the civil guard this time, saying that covenants and churches were not worth losing more Republican lives. That further angered conservatives. That quote that churches were not that important and they wouldn't risk lives of people to save churches was widely carried throughout Spain, and people believed that the state was not going to support um, the church. So in June, elections were finally held to make up a parliamentary body known as the Cortes. Uh, 
No party held a majority, but the Spanish Socialist Workers Party, the PSOE, was the largest. They were supported by trade unionists and anarchists who didn't run candidates or form a political party out of principle, but supported them in spirit. They basically saw this republic as a trial, and if it didn't go far enough, they could be overthrown as well. To the right, you had LaRue's Radicals, Azana's Republican Action Party, and the conservative Catholic Republican Party of Alcala Zamora. The Alfonsist, Carlist, and Phalangist ran nominees as well. In July of 1931, the new parliament met and a constitution was drafted by a Catholic lawyer. The draft separated church and state, established religious liberty, and recognized popular sovereignty. Some saw it as not going far enough. Others saw it as too, too far. Socialist lawyers were appointed by the president to redraw the constitution, and they did so proposing a new draft in December of 31 that created a secular system with equal rights, female suffrage, civil marriage and divorce. Also, the state could claim property for compensation to the owners for the purpose of redistribution. It also set up free education for all, dissolved the Jesuits, banned religious communities, that meant covenants, and from teaching, banned them from teaching, and that even meant private schools. Alcala Zamora was angry at this. He resigned from office, and basically this meant the government became staunchly more leftist, uh, with Manuel Azana becoming prime minister in December. So the government of Azana, which ran from 31 to 33, was really caught between two fires. You had the left, which wanted more radical reform, that meant the anarchist and more radical communist, and the right that wanted less reform. They, they saw it as too much. This meant they debated things about land reform, education, uh, autonomy for regions of Spain, and Azana tried to rule at the time, trying to work both sides, but found it very difficult. There were some laws in 1932, the agrarian reform law began land redistribution, but it had only taken a little land from private owners and settled around 12,000 families on this property. That's not many, 12,000 out of 24 million people. By 1932, the CNT and the anarchists had also decided the Republican government was not moving fast enough towards reform and openly announced they were against this government. They struck uh, in the summer of 1931, which left 30 people dead when soldiers were sent in to quell the strike. As well, in the village of Castel Blanco, uh, a demonstration by rural socialist unions was broken up by a, the Civil Guard in December of 31 and left one member of the Union dead. The crowd in Castel Blanco then seized the Civil Guards and lynched four of them. This led to reprisal killings by the Civil Guard in other parts of Spain. As a result of these killings, Azana removed the leader of the Civil Guard, General Senorjo, who we'll talk more about in the next video, and Senorjo began plotting with other generals to overthrow the government in a coup.